My task today is merely guide you through a journey about how to foster entrepreneurial and valorization mindsets with the final goal of increase the societal impact of research and use innovation to benefit humanity. Societal challenges demand that we can effectively transfer academic knowledge and turn studies and publications into new products, processes and services for the good of citizens and the planet. There's a wide diversity of valorization actors and channels of knowledge valorization. And this morning, we will focus on students, young researchers and young entrepreneurs and actions that develop their entrepreneurial skills and spirit. We heard already three excellent examples of young students entrepreneurs. Lucy and Nikolai and Maria, they talked about several um, actions and training actions and how they were important in their lives. They also gave us some important messages about energy, take action and go ahead with your idea. Um, so I believe we are all inspired by their words. Can we actually increase the valorization of the high quality knowledge we daily produ produce? Can we foster entrepreneurial capacity among students and young researchers? And how can we do it? So our speakers today have a disruptive, disruptive vision of entrepreneurship and knowledge valorization. They will share their experience with us. And I believe we'll have a great discussion around this theme. So I'll start by introducing them. Linda is the director of the demonstrator level version Virgin University of Amsterdam, and she's an assistant professor. And her path went through research, teaching, and she's also an entrepreneur. She's co-founder of several successful life science companies. As an academic, she studies how valorization processes enable stakeholders to achieve a broad societal impact of knowledge and teaches societal, uh, societal entrepreneurship and finance for growth. And Ivan Stefanic, professor at Josip Europe Strossmayer University. He is a business developer and technology transfer specialist with more than 30 years of international experience in research and business. He is the founder and executive director of Terra Technopolis, established in 2002. And he You'll talk about be the role model, the, the important example for this and, and the national winner in European Entrepreneurship Promotion Award, an excellent example of um, an action to promote and mentor students and young entrepreneurs through their journey. So after this introduction, I want to remind the audience that it would be wonderful to have your participation on this webinar uh, through Slido uh, to, and have your questions. So you can write your questions uh, and we'll try to get them answered by our panelists. And I will now hang over to Linda. Please, Linda, feel free to start. Thank you, uh, Katushka. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, today, I want to share with you the story of the Demonstrator Lab in Amsterdam, uh, an entrepreneurial teaching facility in disguise. All this to ultimately incorporate their startup and grow to deliver an unmet societal needs. But if you zoom in, you see that it doesn't focus on return on investment. In fact, the Demonstrator Lab operates at the earliest phase of the idea to market process. Can you do the next slide, please? We work before the aspiring entrepreneur has even incorporated at the Chamber of Commerce. We don't take any equity stake or charge any fees, and we make virtually no selection on intake. There's no cut on project scalability. We don't even select based on the skills the team comes with at the start. So how does this work? Because we focus on teaching entrepreneurial skills more than anything aiming to unleash the entrepreneurial potential of our organization into the Amsterdam ecosystem. Our lab is open to students and researchers alike. It creates a melting pot where people of different ages, experience and cultural backgrounds can interact with each other and learn from each other. In our lab, participants can explore multiple scenarios to bring ideas out of the lab into the real world. 
In our 200 square meters of lab space, projects get access to all sorts of experimental and fabrication equipment. This provides our participants the opportunity to carry out technical feasibility studies. Moreover, at the lab, we have well-connected and dedicated technicians who think long about the design and experiments necessary to develop a minimal viable product and have the know-how to, uh, to provide the necessary expertise on, uh, of experts on or off the campus. As a startup facilitator, we also help our projects with ironing out the details of their business idea. We help them to formulate a set of hypotheses and milestones and to perform tests with the real customers. We are monthly gathering our participants in groups of eight to 10 to discuss with them the progress they are making in an intervision format. And crucially, every three or four months, we check in on them individually, ask how they are doing and help them decide whether their project is still worth pursuing. The peer groups play an important role in our community building. Next to regular Ask Me Anything sessions about business or tech, active stimulation by our team to interact with other participants, we have built a vibrant entrepreneurship community. In this respect, it is important to note that the Demonstrator Lab has also become a pole of attractions for students who do not have a commercial idea themselves. Yet, they are interested to offer support to existing projects by sharing their skills and know-how. Students from business schools, students from AI, students from software development, from their faculty of natural sciences across the campus. Once every month, we organize a masterclass on a specific topic relevant to starting entrepreneurs and how to form a successful founder team, how to pitch to an investor, what makes a business case fundable, or how to deal with intellectual property. Those masterclasses are hosted by the Demonstrator Lab, but they are organized by the many mentors, coaches, incubators, business angels, venture capitalists, and innovation funds that make the Amsterdam entrepreneurial eco ecosystem such a vibrant place to start a company. Once a year, we all gather at our open day, where our network comes together in a startup market. All this ensures easy access for our projects to that Amsterdam entrepreneurial ecosystem, once they graduate from the Demonstrator Lab. Thus our work ends when the project incorporates at the Chamber of Commerce. Then it is time for others to take over. Clearly a program like this could not develop without a robust management team. At the Demonstrator Lab, our team is composed of academic researchers who have experienced the startup process themselves, of business developers of the VU Technology Transfer Office, ICSA, and of dedicated operational and tech support professionals. So that's it, our learning by doing multidisciplinary teaching facility in disguise. All in all, this Demonstrator Lab infrastructure represents a unique development environment for students and staff with an enterprising idea. We give them the physical space in which you turn the concept into a tangible product, some funds to buy the things they need, a range of coaching, mentoring, and peer support to build their entrepreneurial mindset, and access to our extensive network of venture capitalists and potential users. Within this constellation of services and support, they choose what they need to take their idea from brainwave to reality. So how are we doing? Since we started five years ago, we have supported 100 projects from which 21 incorporated at the Chamber of Commerce. Does this mean they become the next unicorn? Maybe. We have brought them from the eureka moment to the edge of the valley of death. From there, others are taking over. The majority of the projects are still working on their idea, which is in line with the embryonic nature of academic knowledge. 27 have discontinued the project. Importantly, all those discontinued projects ended with a handshake and a group of grateful participants. We see that too as a positive learning outcome. The Demonstrator Lab is as much, or maybe even more, about the journey as it is about the destination. Failures generate feedback, providing valuable input for evaluations and analysis. But more importantly, everyone, success or failure, ends up with a new set of valuable skills. Next slide, please. And just yesterday, 
we opened another location at the University of Amsterdam, our sister university within Amsterdam. To enable a demonstrator lab location close to the primary process of research and education for even more students and staff within Amsterdam. We are very much looking forward to our next step to support even more promising startup in their very first idea, phase of idea to market. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Linda van der Google. You really took us inside Demonstrator Lab. It was amazing. Thank you. Lots of food for thought. But if I might ask you, do you think every academic or entrepreneurial academic, if we might say, can be an entrepreneur? And in what ways does entrepreneurship contribute to knowledge valorization? Yeah, thank you, Katiska. And no, I don't think every academic should become an entrepreneur. So how I always say it, in an academic ecosystem, it's like having legs under a chair. So if academics just sit on the knowledge for knowledge pillar of their chair, they are not very stable. But if they add a knowledge valorization leg, so if they add engaging with lay public, engaging with professionals, engaging with entrepreneurship, if they add legs to the chair, they become more stable. And I don't believe uh, academics should do this by themselves. I think they should do this within the team they are working in, within their research group or within their institution. And the broader you are within all those different forms of valorization, the more stable you are as a research group, because knowledge valorization is not just about making sure the knowledge you have already produced has value within society, but it's also about getting access to the unmet needs within society, getting access to resources you never thought of. So really, it's a process and the engagement is uh, very important. And if I might ask you another question that we have, from which disciplines do students come to your demonstrator lab? What do you do to attract students from other disciplines? Yeah, so we have the we have the lab facilities, which which of course attract mostly students from the exact sciences. But we also have a lot of students from the business schools. We just have creative ideas. We have students from uh, from the humanities. We have students from psychology. We have students from social sciences. And um, yeah, we have a range of different processes to to attract them, including engaging with the student faculty councils, and shooting with courses on entrepreneurship that are organized within uh, a lot of those uh, faculty faculties um, and actually the the match of all those different types of businesses is such a rich uh, ground for uh, for creating ideas that truly benefit society for sure and and combining are those uh, competences and different competences combined between themselves so would you mix a business student with the social science students and with, uh, I don't know, biotechnology student, for instance? Yeah, so so we have a number of students who are also trained, already trained in an interdisciplinary fashion, who study science and business, who study policy and entrepreneurship, specific for different right. um, disciplines. Um, and we are also organizing across the campus speed dating sessions where our teams who say, I actually need a business professional. I actually need a software professional. I actually need that we allow them to, uh, to meet each other and to build their team from that. Excellent. Excellent inputs. Thank you. It's, it's really about uh, uh, connecting people. It's, it's a lot about connecting people, isn't it? It is. And Talking about people, let's now hear what Ivan has to tell us about entrepreneurial mindset with this example from Croatia. Ivan, Ivan, whenever you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, thank you, Katushka. Uh, and what to say? Uh, Be the role model is seriously gamified and digitalized entrepreneurial educational program. But above all, it's a competitive program. And competition is very powerful concept with at least two layers. You compete against your former self and you compete against others. 
And then if you take the program seriously and if you're passionate about your business, you can become a best version of yourself, but also a successful business person, global player, and actually the role model to many current and future entrepreneurs. Uh, to show how the program works, we prepared uh, a short video. So whenever we're ready, we can see the video. Dear Knowledge Valorization Week participants, it is great pleasure to present you Be The Role Model program. And Be The Role Model is just short of Be The Role Model, Be The Entrepreneur. If you ask yourself, why did we change the font in Everything Is Possible into red and white checkerboard? It is just to emphasize it and support the claim. In spite of all odds, Croatia in 2018 was first runner up at FIFA's World Cup. We simply did it. And before telling you more about the program, let me tell you why we did it. We are operating in the off capital area of the Republic of Croatia, in the outskirts of European Union. You only have to drive 35 kilometers eastbound and you are outside of EU. If you drive 70 kilometers southbound, again, you are outside of EU, but this time in another country. And choices available to our young and professionals aren't so great. And we wanted to change that with help of powerful EU initiatives. So without further delays, let's learn more about the program. Be the Role Model is a complete training program for future entrepreneurs. Croatia is a beautiful country. Education, innovations, and technology are great, but entrepreneurs need some help to increase their competitiveness. Self-employment is rare, surroundings aren't supportive, and international rankings show that. We wanted to change that, to change the future, by improving business skills. We train small groups of dedicated people. The core of our teaching is innovations, but not all are happy with innovations. So we focused on business plans based on carefully selected ideas. We designed our own business plan application to produce decent quality business plan. We made our educational program truly international. It's hard in the beginning and even worse in the middle. But in the end, we are getting what we want. Numbers are impressive, but the recipe is simple. Continuous improvement. Every year we added some new feature. We launched Be The Role Model in 2005. We went international introduced the elevator pitch, started robotic competitions, and executed them superbly, published our own newsletter, went to other Croatian cities, reinforced our initiative with EEM, introduced scientific conferences, and celebrated successes, refined our entrepreneurial academy, released our first application, and trained the first international generation of trainers. Finally, we released a bold plan for the future. How it works? Simple. We will not tell you just a piece of information, but the whole story, and we will tell it in a simple way. We will work hard, but we'll never forget to have fun. Our teaching is modern, we use all media, and that works well. We combine projects effectively, and keep them in our portfolio. Teamwork and friendships are our bread and butter, and that approach brought us far away. We know we should have started earlier. Not that earlier, but that earlier. When youngsters want to be football players or school teachers. If we do just about anything, we will do it with style. So why not the rock concert? I said simple, and technically it is. We have a bold plan for the future. We will challenge our participants, but we will train them well and support later to prevail obstacles by helping them at the beginning. We dare to prepare for the future. We dare to prepare to be role models because everything is possible. Innovations are a very important element of our teaching, but not all are happy with innovations. And to become successful and get return on your investments, you have to stay in the business for a longer period. It would be beneficial to receive some help from your environment. But surprisingly, there is eight step algorithm that will actually stop a lot of inventions. And I was frustrated with that. I thought Croatians are horrible, but surprisingly, this is not Croatian invention, it's American. The only innovation I could find locally 
was step number nine, designed to drain the remaining enthusiasm. So how to solve the situation? Sense of initiative and entrepreneurship could certainly help, especially if you are good at entrepreneurship, microeconomics, macroeconomics, management and marketing. But we are talking about knowledge-based entrepreneurship, and this is not enough. We need some science and technology competences, some communication competences, and some other competences. And all that is well-defined in European Union recommendation on key competences for a lifelong learning. And we could say that even simpler. Entrepreneurial competences, science and technology competences, digital competences, and recently, environmental aspect. So pay attention to UN SDGs as well. Our system has several layers. First is innovative product or services. Second, innovative business model. And third, innovative implementation. All that is described in university textbook or entrepreneurial manuals in several languages. We have simple and fairly advanced application for writing business plan. But all this is at the level of skills. Without culture and paradigm shift, it is not reasonable to expect some significant improvements are possible. Rubik's Cube is an excellent prop to explain either all model as a program. At the very beginning, we focused on setting up portfolio of services custom tailored for knowledge-based entrepreneurs. Then we secured the financing through a portfolio of projects. But what was obvious to us wasn't automatically obvious to our clients. So we set up the Be The Role model as an integration platform where all those services are linked in efficient and easy to understand way. And slowly, but steadily, references became very persuasive and, frankly speaking, impressive. And this is Be the Role Model Front Office, International Invention Show, Business Plan Competition, and Food Fair, with a lot of opportunities to get entrepreneurial education and networking with relevant stakeholders. Back office is a little complicated, I admit that. There is a lot of moving parts that could cause confusion and even scare some people. So let's investigate the back office. At first sight, yes, it's complicated. But when you analyze subsystems, you will see that movement of blue balls is fairly simple, straightforward, and in general contributes to overall efficacy of the system. And that's part of systematic approach. So let's talk about those blue balls. They are actually a small assignments that more or less every entrepreneur is supposed to perform on a regular or occasional basis. And the cruel fact of life, not all are good at all those assignments or they simply don't have time. Luckily, there is a lot of entrepreneurial know-how to solve the, that issue. And since we are talking about knowledge-based economy, there is a lot of IP all over the matrix. So we pay a very special attention to teaching IP. This is our portfolio from 2018, and it's already well improved compared to the portfolio in 2005. But it is not possible, it's not allowed to sleep. So we're constantly improving our portfolio because the environment is changing rapidly. So we are improving our portfolio even right now. Where other people saw problem, we saw opportunities. And then next year, another problem or opportunity. So it is important to adjust accordingly, but it is important also to take a deep breath, celebrate success, and then move forward. There is no secret. People are not reading textbooks anymore. They would like to have gamified learning experience. So we use a lot of gamified teaching aids. This is mental map of our innovative entrepreneurship island. 
This is our IP3. And they are well received. Those are some of our successes. But most importantly, we are serious and reliable business. And all that is not work of any single individual. It's a teamwork. And this is my team. I'm extremely proud of them because they could do just about anything. They only need some time. After so many years and lessons learned, it is temptation to start giving advices to others. Frankly speaking, I don't like that. But if I only could send a couple of advices to me back in the past, that would be, do not spare the effort in managing your stakeholders and champions network. That's extremely important. And then, after all necessary radical and incremental improvements, your machinery will run smoothly and you achieve what you want. It took us 17 years to become one-stop shop for innovative entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial scientists. We helped them to transform their innovative ideas to profitable businesses, but not only profitable, competitive, environmentally sound, and socially responsible. Our program is now well tweaked and tuned and could actually serve as a role model to others who want to develop similar program or they can simply join us and achieve more for less. Thank you for your attention. Um, in the beginning of your, of your speech, the word competition and how competition is important to, to the success of this, um, of these students and this, these researchers and this, um, this young, youngsters. But what about cooperation? How do you see, would that be a key value to foster successful startups, for instance? Uh, Atushka, that's an excellent question. Uh, competition is something that will uh, take you out of your room, exposed to comparison with others, and preferably improve. Uh, cooperation is still rare. Uh, a lot of students, just like a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, tend to be sole proprietors. But it is important to uh, emphasize uh, when you are in a high-tech and global business, it is extremely difficult to be a sole proprietor and uh, successful. Uh, it is uh, teamwork, and people uh, should cooperate. Now we are tweaking and tuning program for cooperation, uh, primarily from students from science, technology, and engineering courses with uh, business uh, students. Right. If you set the cooperation platform well, uh, you are set for much bigger uh, goals. Linda, would you like to add something? Do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. I think cooperation is very important to, uh, to entrepreneurial success um, because as an entrepreneur, you are creating something from scratch. So you need to find the resources that you have and you do that in a team. And I agree also that it's very important to, to have the combination of the business and the STEM students. Um, more importantly, I think it's very good that we are also now teaching students to become more interdisciplinary and even transdisciplinary. So th that is also a separate skill set. So we need the disciplinary skills, we need the interdisciplinary skills, we need the transdisciplinary skills. And I think that will foster the, uh, the innovation ecosystem. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, could because, I add something, Katushka? Of course. Uh, of actually, course. if you have a world-class scientist, and then he tries to become world-class business person. Uh, it's a tough. Uh, and in many cases, they are just about good at being business persons. And being good at is not enough for successful high, uh, business. You have to be excellent one. And this is, this is the reason why you should team up and not uh, force yourself to become a superhero. I agree. And to, to add to that, we also need people who are excellent in facilitating yes. that collaboration. That would be you, right? Both of you. Yes, in, in a sense, but it would also be people within the entrepreneurial teams who are able to build the bridge because to be an excellent scientist and to be an excellent business person, that doesn't really mean that you're excellent in bringing everything together within the team. Of course, of course. 
So you're 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 telling that the team some can be sometimes uh, most important than the 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 idea itself, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, actually, Katushka, you can ruin a perfect uh, chief technical officer, a world class scientist, by pushing him into something we uh, in which he's not feel he's comfortable. Not. So uh, don't do that. Uh, enjoy a perfect chief technical officer and find chief operational officer or executive officer to amend him and create a powerful team. Excellent words, excellent idea. Thank you. So we're uh, receiving a lot of questions from Slido. I would like to put another excellent question. Um, that is, how do you measure and monitor whether students have improved their entrepreneurial mindset after the end of the training? And I think this, this question might be for both of you. Participants entering finals, this is also a very important uh, indicator. And then uh, final instruments, how many of those participants who participate in the final actually started their business? Uh, and then how many of them were great successes? Uh, so there is a lot of indicators, and I would say it takes time. It is not reasonable to expect to uh, become Olympic class sport uh, person or world class business person in just one year or after one semester uh, special training. It takes time. So uh, you might achieve much more in the next appearance of the uh, competition or after a couple of years of experience in very good company. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It takes, yeah, it takes a lot of time to uh, to actually uh, shape and hone those skills. So maybe to differentiate the demonstrator lab from the great example that even presented. So we are really in the pre-incubation stage. So we are very mm -hmm. at the early stage where people are just exploring. Yeah. We have uh, investment funds for the very early stage, and that is all modularly organized within the Amsterdam ecosystem. Excellent. Putting the actors working together and not overlap competences. It's, yes. it's very, very important. And reminds me what Ivan uh, uh, said about the importance of managing stakeholders and, and how the, the Be the Role Mother stands for One Stop shop for entrepreneurs uh, and gets uh, gets together a, a policy mix, I would say, of instruments, um, European and national, I believe. And do you do you think even this this um, this mix and this integration platform contributes for the results of the of the program? Absolutely. Uh, be the role model as such is uh, also a pre-incubation program, but at Terra Technopolis we have a small incubator, so we could uh, accompany them and support them through the incubation phase. We can also uh, help them in acceleration phase, and uh, to be successful at this assignment, uh, we became a national hub for, of aid food. Uh, we are a partner in Enterprise Europe Network. Network. So we integrated a lot of powerful EU initiatives. And then uh, there is one difference compared to many other entrepreneurial support institutions. When we execute the program and we see its place in our portfolio, we're going to keep it in our portfolio permanently at our own expense. All maintenance, we will uh, take that and... Uh, Build on that. It is not just project executed and filed to the shelf. No, uh, it is great tool. Let's keep it. Let's improve it over time and use it uh, because it works. And only time can show us that the results can be really good, right? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, it is not just the result. It is also a journey and the process. Yes, uh, and then if you don't that. enjoy uh, enjoy the process and journey, uh, this is really not the right stuff. Uh, enjoy both results; that's important, but journey and improvement itself. Linda, you said the same, right? Right. It's really about it's really about the journey, and it's really is about it should be fun, and it also should not be fun because if it's only fun, then you're not learning anything, right? Because learning learning um, is painful sometimes. 
and it should be because it should be out of your comfort zone but it should be just enough that you that you combine the fun with the with the discomfort and you keep motivated right yes absolutely yeah so another question another question from slido uh what are the incentives for students to join the programs do you have special communication activities i think we already uh, touched some, some in some points this this question but if you would like to 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 develop okay uh i could tell Uh, there are some financial awards. Uh, there are some uh, further education programs uh, by our sponsors. Uh, also, every finalist is entitled for uh, six months uh, incubation free of charge. Uh, so it is not only about game, competition and education. It could be actually the real business. And uh, we'll set uh, our program in incub incubator uh, for that purposes. And then uh, being an incubator, oh, that's great because networking opportunities and support by other EU initiatives are, in many cases, uh, really important. Yeah. So, so what we offer to the to the projects, so we offer them the facilities, the mentoring, the network, and a little bit of seed money to buy the materials they need to uh, to develop their prototypes. And I think what's very interesting with Ivan's project is that he actually. So we are working together with all these different aspects within the ecosystem. And Ivan, if I hear your story, you have actually integrated them into one into one organization. And I think that's that's really amazing, and that's really. Uh, 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 very good because it, it allows a one single entry and where we have to depend and we are we're doing it very well we have to depend on people starting um, entering knocking the door at one uh, one door and then we have to transfer them but we take them there if they should be at the uh, incubation program we bring them there and we bring them back when they finished so that's why you know, that I think it's a very different approach um, and, and it also depends on the uh, on the ecosystem that you are in But making sure that people don't get lost in lost. all these supports, I think that's very that's very important. That's that's uh, an amazing example, and how how you both with different approaches can can help students and researchers to get to their to their to, to their path and through their journey. Yeah. We have uh, a few minutes to end, so before our final messages that I would like to ask you, I would like a super short answer about. Uh, IP, because it connects with the Knowledge Valorization Week. Um, are students aware of IP protection and is it part of training support or support in your programs? Okay, who's first? Linda, please. Yeah, <laughs> you can so, start. So, so yes, we, we share with them uh, at the very beginning the, the importance of IP protection. The people from the technology transfer office, so the business developers from the technology transfer office of the university, are also part of the demonstrator lab. So they Thank also you. approach them, especially about the, the IP uh, aspects that are very relevant. And I think it's very important to know that the demonstrator lab, it doesn't take any equity or IP from students. So all the student projects, they are student owned. So we explain to them how they should handle their IP, but the university doesn't have any stake in it. It's all uh, to really support the student entrepreneurship. Okay, amazing. Okay, and Good I mind. could just uh, say the same. We don't take any stakes or uh, fees. Uh, we are helping them to, uh, to properly uh, develop IP strategy and even to file appropriate instruments. Uh, and this is our signature service. Uh, believe it or not, in 2005, there was no single uh, IP professional in the city of Osijek, which is a city with more than 100,000 people. So Terra Technopolis started uh, working seriously on IP, and that brought us to position. Uh, I became later on IP, EU IP Help Desk Ambassador and Certified Patent and Trademark Attorney. So our Precisely. clients have state-of-the-art IP protection. Precisely. Great. So we could be here the whole morning talking and talking about all this and answering questions, but I have to ask you your um, final Uh, message, your key message, or your, your recommendation. Uh, what's your your message to conclude this this panel, Linda? Please. Yeah. So, 
so I think it's important to know that entrepreneurship is just one of the many forms that valorization can take. So we have guideline development, we have educating the general public, we have sharing knowledge with professionals in the field. However, I do think that entrepreneurial skills come into play across knowledge valorization processes and also throughout the European knowledge economy. Uh, talk about effective communication, trying new things, leadership, personal leadership, learning from failures. And it's also huge fun. So I think facilitating entrepreneurship is an excellent way as a starting point for stimulating valorization mindsets across the ecosystem um, because it is fun, because it's valuable and because it has effect. Thank you. Ivan, what's your message? Uh, the message is simple. Entrepreneurship is a really interesting uh, thing. Uh, your investment is for sure, but returns are optional. Uh, and you might lose it. Uh, so that might scare a lot of people. And if they are not well trained, uh, the scare is even bigger. The message is you are not alone. There are powerful EU initiatives. There are very competent entrepreneurial support institutions. But they cannot do that without you. So take this first step. Let us know. And we will help you, we will guide you and mentor through the process. And then results could be amazing. You could be not only successful, but also fulfilled. And you can be the role model to many others. Perfect, perfect. Thank you a lot. It was a privilege to be moderating this amazing panel.